Hi, everyone. Welcome to the live online Adventist update, finishing 2020 strong and a look into 2021, hosted by SIX. Today, we're joined by Christian Carlos Mard, President, CEO, and Director, and Sam Lem, Vice President of Corporate Development. Christian and Sam are going to walk you through a company presentation, and then we will be opening up the floor to accept questions. As a reminder, you can submit your questions at any point during today's event in a Q&A panel on the right-hand side of your screen. Without further ado, I'm going to hand it over to Christian to kick things off. Thank you, Jane, for the introduction. And uh, greetings to everyone on the line. Thank you for taking the next uh, 30 minutes to an hour to uh, get an update on Aventus. We're not going to do the standard uh, presentation uh, for this session. Uh, most of the people on the call that I've seen so far know the story reasonably well. So we'll be talking about our achievements over the last uh, six months uh, since we've had the last uh, or first session on, on, on this uh, format and talking about what we're looking forward to in 2021 and the significant uh, news flow uh, going forward. Forward looking statements and into, uh, into the company overview. So most people who've been following the company have seen this slide before. These are the main pillars uh, of the company, of uh, the value behind it and the excitement going forward. So first off is, uh, is expiration. So that's why we are in Ecuador to make major new discoveries. As many people know, we've, uh, we've developed dozens of expiration targets, comparable expiration targets in, in the country, and it's now testing uh, the best of those uh, targets uh, for, for new discovery and significant new discovery. We've been drilling at our Pahili uh, Porphyry District since June, and we recently put out the first drill results ever on the project with, uh, with the new discovery. We expect to be drilling there throughout uh, next year as well. At uh, our Curry Palmer project, our top expiration target, La Vaquera, we will have a drill turning over the next week or two. And at Santiago, we look forward to uh, drilling our, our porphyry target there uh, next year. With our partners, the Salazars, we continue to uh, review additional opportunities, properties and new districts to add to our portfolio. And there could be news on that front over uh, the next few months. The backstop of value for the company is the feasibility study stage El Domo uh, project, which is around 50-50 base and precious metals uh, revenue mix. On a gold equivalent basis, we have an M&I resource of 2.4 million ounces at 8.3 grams. A DRA engineering is leading a consortium of uh, engineers on a feasibility study, which is on time and on budget, and which we expect to be released around this time uh, next year. On a copper basis, this project would have the highest IRR of any copper development projects uh, globally. And on a gold basis, this is one of the highest grade open pit uh, uh, gold equivalent uh, development projects uh, in, in the world. Uh, and then lastly, which ties it all together and allows us to really push on all fronts uh, in the companies is, is, our, is our investor base. We're very fortunate to raise the $38 million in a bot deal, which closed in August, uh, with a lot of new institutional investors. We've been able to grow our institutional base from just over 20 to now over 40 uh, this year. And that fully funds us to 2022 and hopefully one of three situations, either a construction decision at El Domo, one or more major discoveries, or perhaps M&A on uh, one or more of our projects or, or the company. Cap structure post the financing is 131 million shares outstanding, which at today's price gives us a 122 million market cap, 42 million in cash, 5 million equities, which is primarily Canstar Resources, which is a, a polymetallic explorer uh, in in uh, Newfoundland, so we own 25% of that company, giving us an enterprise value of 75 million Canadian or around 50 million US. This is actually one of the cheapest enterprise values that the company's ever had. Uh, we're the most de risk we've ever been with the cash in our register and with uh, currently five drill rigs turning to be seven in the next few weeks. One of the reasons for that uh, is what transpired. Uh, post closing of equity financing in September. It was a, 
watershed moment for the company in terms of de-risking the plan going forward. But at the same time, uh, unfortunately, one of our original investors, resource capital funds, due to uh, their own specific circumstances, had to exit uh, Adventus as well as a few other stories globally. And so that was ensued in 12 million shares of selling uh, between the closing of the financing and the beginning of October. You can see the big volume day uh, there at the end of September, uh, 8 million shares got crossed. Uh, good thing is that that got crossed to seven institutions, long-term institutions. Uh, we're very pleased with, uh, with having that support. The negative out of it is between the $38 million financing plus say $14, $15 million out the door to RCF. Um, that's $52, $53 million of stock uh, that got chewed through by, by new investors. And that's put a little bit of um, overhang on the stock here in the, in the 90 cent range. Uh, as mentioned, we've never been cheaper, so it's an opportunity. Uh, but the key for us is now bringing in new investors to uh, keep us uh, moving forward and higher with the share price along with a, a very active news program that uh, is, uh, it has started in the last few months. With RCF out of the story, uh, you can see our new pie chart of ownership. Uh, the lion's share of the shareholder base is now institutional. Uh, and the pie chart on the right shows we're truly a internationally owned company with a good pickup of uh, new investors out of Asia Pacific and Europe over the last, uh, last few months. Uh, so prior to uh, RCF selling, they were around uh, low teens. And uh, that was eaten up, as mentioned, by, by seven institutional investors. A reminder in Ecuador. So many of our peers are trading at near all-time highs uh, over the last few months. Solaris uh, reconfirmed uh, the, the Rowinsa project, a very uh, exciting porphyry project in, in Ecuador, and they've had great drill holes coming out of that. Uh, Cornerstone Soul Gold are on uh, cusp of new discoveries in, in Ecuador. Challenger out of Australia has, uh, has done very well. Uh, and overall, by our count, uh, Ecuador has been third place globally in terms of uh, investment after Canada and Australia. So that shows uh, the country is open for business. And the majority of the juniors involved in copper exploration globally uh, raise capital um, uh, with Ecuadorian focus, so uh, including ourselves. So, you know, lo lots of eyes on the country. Hopefully, there'll be many new discoveries uh, going forward. Uh, the current overhang, I would say, on the country is this presidential election that's, that's occurring. Uh, I'm, I and the team are ca cautiously optimistic uh, with the outcome. Uh, there's three key leaders in the mix right now. Uh, we would say two out of the three would be neutral to pro mining. And the timeline for the outcome of the election would be a first round in February and the second round if it goes to a runoff in March. So that will set the stage on uh, uh, any modifications to the current uh, policy, uh, who's going to be in the key uh, positions in the resource industry or resource ministry and the vice minister of mines. And that's very important for us because we are gearing up to uh, submitting our environmental assessment next year, having the feasibility study completed, and hopefully starting construction at uh, our Curry Palmer project in, in 2022. Jumping into the Curry Palmer project, which is uh, underpinned by the El Domo project and feasibility study. As a reminder, we have uh, a 2.4 million ounce, 2.3, 2.4 million ounce, gold equivalent resource in the MNI at 8.3 grams gold equivalent. That's primarily 40 to 80 meters from surface. We have three roads to the project, a power to the project. We're three hours away from the major port city of Guayaquil. And we've got a 25 year mining permit and have acquired the key surface rights to build the mine. So we've been de-risking throughout this year uh, the, the key uh, development aspects uh, of the project. Uh, El Domo is the postage stamp you can see within the 220 square kilometer district as highlighted in the green here. 
The STARS are new exploration targets, which uh, generally have never been uh, drilled uh, before. We have ranked those targets. The drill uh, will be turning at Lava Cara down the south, our top uh, exploration target in the district in the next week or two. And we've got a 3,000 meter drill program uh, with seven holes outlined over the next, uh, next few months. Uh, along with completing the feasibility study uh, in fourth quarter next year and submitting the EIA, our goal over the next uh, 12 months is to make one or more significant discoveries within this district, hopefully starting with the La Vaquera project. Uh, specifically on La Vaquera, uh, we are surrounded, or we're just to the south of us, we, we've got an open pit operating kaolinite mine, and we're surrounded by a granitoid feature that wraps around uh, the project. There is a small uh, gold silver resource at, uh, it, as shown in the oval there with some of the highlights of drilling from uh, 2007 to 2008. And the area of focus is the trend, two kilometer trend west, uh, southwest from there where you can see the illustrative drill holes. Uh, and the coloring you see there is the ground IP results, but that is also layered on with our top airborne geophysical result and some of our best surface showings within that two kilometer trend. So uh, as mentioned, drilling to start there uh, imminently in the next uh, week or two. Uh, also expected uh, from a news flow perspective are the infill drilling results required to complete the feasibility study. So this is a 40 to 45 hole program, short holes with two drill rigs with results uh, uh, starting in December and being continuous throughout uh, the first half of next year. The aim of that program is to upgrade the, uh, the resource or reserve to a uh, measured or proven category. We expect to see around 65 to 70 percent of, of the resource in, in the proven category and also to uh, generate additional metallurgical samples for the ongoing metallurgical program. We're building a geometallurgical model um, as well as a geomechanical work. And the results are going to be a reminder to the market on how high grade this project is. So expect kind of similar results as uh, highlighted here on this on this slide. So say you know, anywhere between on average uh, five to 20 meter true width of uh, between six to 15 percent uh, copper equivalent. A reminder on the economics on this project. So at July 31st pricing, not dissimilar to where we are today, we have an NPV eight after tax of $343 million, 46% after tax IRR payback of around one and a half years. And you can see the commodity split as, uh, as shown on, uh, on this page. That 343 million NPV US after tax is compared to Adventus's current EV enterprise value of 50 million US. So it's it's pretty silly, uh, especially when you look when you compare this project to any of the more attractive gold uh, or precious metals development projects in the Americas. This project uh, comps very very well uh, with a 15 year mine life producing 100,000 ounces of gold equivalent production a year at a $400 uh, C1 cash cost. So DRA Engineering is completing this study. We should have a thorough update on how the feasibility study is proceeding uh, with any changes of scope compared to the PEA within the next uh, month. And the timeline here at Curry Pamba is continued exploration results uh, on an infill basis until the middle of next year on an exploration basis throughout uh, uh, next year and into 2022. Draft EIA submittal summer of next year, feasibility study fourth quarter next year, start of construction in the summer of 2022. That gets us to production uh, in early 2024, which puts us in a select group of copper development projects uh, globally. So these are greenfield projects as shown below. And the benefit of our project is because of the very strong credits, the incentive price uh, we need for, for copper to get a 15% after tax rate of return, assuming spot pricing of everything else, is negative 20 cents a pound. So it is extremely economic uh, a project, and that gives us the confidence on being able to finance this project and to really drive forward on uh, on the, one of the next copper mines globally over the next uh, next few years. Separately, uh, we're busy 
on big porphyry exploration. Uh, we're, we're trying to make you know multi you know multi hundred million ton discoveries, hopefully billion ton discoveries. Uh, the the Healy project is in uh, southwestern uh, Ecuador. We are next to Southern Copper's very large uh, Chaucha uh, project, which is in uh, feasibility study. Uh, we have multiple porphyry targets that were developed uh, through airborne geophysics, and uh, we started our maiden exploration program uh, on drilling uh, in June of this year with a 5,000 meter program. Uh, published. Uh, the first results out of drilling just in the last few weeks, which I'll which I'll take you through. So this is a district we're continuing to grow our land position on. You know, we'll see continued ex, uh, drilling results over the next few months, and in early next year, we'll decide uh, what the next phase of drilling. We'll look at this first target we've been drilling, and also how we're going to drill the second and maybe third target for the district. Just a comment on on Pihili as well. You'll see some of the photos that we included. Um, been tremendous work by our team at site. Um, back in the spring, uh, I think just after the COVID hit Ecuador very hard in, in March and April, um, we made a decision to trial um, new COVID protocols at Bailey Project um, because of its lower density population. And it's been a great success. So we've been able to have the two drill rigs uh, for several months now uh, with the program started in, in late June. Um, and we're taking those lessons learned and applying it in the restart at Curry Palma. So credit to our team and as well our partner Salazar to be able to work during a difficult period and, and more news to come. So specifically looking at the Mercy concession, which is uh, one of several concessions we have in this district, uh, you can see the concession outline in the green and you can see the drill holes uh, in turn, in shown in the, in the red. Uh, the highlights of the uh, the first few holes we released is uh, the first hole shown in the south of the uh, of the concession near some historic uh, artisanal mines was highlighted by 64 meters of 0.44 percent copper equivalent from surface. But more interestingly, uh, we had uh, nine meters of over two percent copper equivalent, as well as 20 meters of about 1.2 percent copper equivalent. The key metal actually within the mix is molybdenum. Uh, you're seeing in that 2% copper equivalent intercept 0.2% uh, 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 molybdenum. Uh, this, is, uh, this was drilled in the hydrothermal breaches. Uh, we think we just missed perhaps a, a feeder um, to these hydrothermal breaches. And when you got 10 to 20 meters of uh, 1% to 2% uh, copper equivalent near surface, it definitely warrants a uh, follow up. And there, there's a kind of a, a ridge uh, uh, up there which um, has. Put, Quite a large, quite a large area that uh, could put together a, a reasonably sized resource with uh, a further drilling. So we'll definitely be following up on that drill hole uh, next year. Our second hole was, which was a 685 meter step to the north northwest from there, was drilled also in a hydrothermal breccia and drilled from surface 145 meters at 0.3 percent, a copper equivalent including 49 meters of 0.36 percent copper equivalent. That's an interesting result. It uh, on its own is probably not an economic hit, but what we're encountering from top to bottom, these holes are disseminated uh, boronite and chalcopyrite with molybdenite. Uh, the boronite is very interesting, seeing that we have it at the very top of the system. And uh, and all the results we're getting through the drilling in, ter in terms of the veining, the types of veins, uh, the, the mineralization and all is going into uh, a, a database to help us um, vector in onto uh, higher grade mineralization. We're continuing to drill going towards the north. We are seeing strengthening in the uh, porphyry veining and uh, some of the mineralization. Uh, it remains to be seen if that means we get a pickup of grade, but we have uh, another seven drill holes approximately to go in terms of uh, uh, both drilling and results to be released in the market over the next uh, four to five months. As part of the drilling, we're also doing uh, test pits, uh, and the test pits are, are shown by the hexagons uh, as we go north from uh, the, those second and third holes. Uh, the test pits are meant to, to get through the overburden and into the hard rock uh, and uh, we're trying to find additional sources of hydrothermal breaches. Uh, a couple of these results uh, 
uh, of the highlights of the results of these test pits over the last few months were between 0.5 to 0.6 percent copper with a decent gold kicker uh, as well. So that is uh, showing that the mineralization is strengthening as we go north and uh, def definitely warrants potential further drilling. Keep in mind that these drill holes, again, are very wide spaced. Um, and so it was 685 meters between hole one and two. The hole between hole two and uh, up here, hole seven, is several hundred meters uh, as well away from each other. So stay tuned uh, on, on the drilling there at Mercy uh, going forward and how we, we're developing the second and third porphyry targets in the district for, for drilling uh, next year. And those are many kilometers away from this uh, Mercy concession to, to, the, uh, to the west. We, uh, we were hopeful uh, that we could get drilling here at Santiago uh, late this year. Uh, we were delayed uh, due to uh, various aspects of COVID-19. Uh, we have been working uh, uh, in the field in a, uh, a minor way over the last few months and really focused on uh, giving back to the communities to support during COVID-19 and get prepared uh, for 2021 uh, drilling. So this is a single concession in Aloha province. We're adjacent to uh, Newcrest and Cornerstone's $100 million earn-in on a property you'll see in the next slide. We have a very large uh, porphyry uh, target there that, that uh, could be a company making uh, discovery uh, next year. So this slide shows our concession there next to the big earn-in deal shown in the oval and uh, Soul Gold uh, down in the, in the south end to the north with that southern uh, concession uh, mix being a top regional target of uh, Soul Gold in Ecuador. And to catch your imagination on uh, the target uh, that we're excited about, this uh, wine glass shape a blob is dimension wise, uh, three kilometers across from the yellow dash line, uh, which is the top of the mag low to the bottom of the wine glass is over two kilometers. And it goes two kilometers into the page. So volumetrically, you could fit a few billion tons into that. And from surface, you can see historical uh, drilling from Newmont about 25 years ago. It's the last time this was ever worked on. And you can see those holes from surface. Um, most of them drilled too shallow, all of them ending in mineralization. Two of them intersecting the very top of that uh, mag low. And the highlight holes are those two holes, uh, 323 meters from surface of 0.65% copper equivalent and 171 meters of 0.91% copper equivalent. Based on the geophysics here, we think the mineralization will get stronger at depth and we will be drilling a few deep holes into this blob later this year. We're targeting the, the summer. So say second to third quarter of next year. Uh, so one and a half kilometer plus holes where hopefully we will be able to intersect 1% copper equivalent uh, or better. Uh, as non-core assets, but uh, optionality for our shareholders, just a reminder, we have a joint venture with South 32 in, in Ireland. Uh, they're funding the next uh, three and a half million euros, including significant exploration drilling, which will start uh, next year on, on our various uh, projects, highlighted by the Rathkeel project, which is uh, due west of Glencore's uh, Palace Green, which is almost a 50 million ton resource at around 8% uh, zinc equivalent. We have, as mentioned previously, a 25% ownership in Canstar Resources, which picked up a, a new gold district south of Newfound Gold uh, in, in Newfoundland. They're currently in the midst of, uh, of trenching, uh, and that should lead to potential drilling in 2021. And we have a shareholding in a private Australian junior called BMEX, which recently merged with Mine Discovery Fund, which will be drilling several projects around the world, including uh, a copper porphyry in Chile, which they just um, uh, joint ventured with Mirasol. So uh, uh, currently not material, but uh, any success with any of these programs could become uh, material in, in due course. Uh, to, to finalize uh, this presentation is update uh, let's talk about news flow. So 
first off at Curry Pamba is that regional exploration was 15 targets. We have a sanctioned 10,000 meter drill program uh, to be testing those targets starting at Lava Cara, and we'll just continue going, uh, checking off those targets over the next few years. And of course, if we have success, we can expand uh, the programs from there. Uh, secondly, is the infill drill program and the geotechnical hydrogeological drill program required for the feasibility study. It's about 5,000 meters of, of infill uh, required to complete the fees. That will be completed in February with the uh, news flow from the infill drilling going until May of next year. And those will be some of the best copper equivalent uh, grade uh, drill results in the world over that, that time frame. And that all leads to the EIA submittal in the summer of next year, feasibility study uh, completion at the end of next year, and any of the strategic discussions that may occur around that. Separately, we've got uh, one to two drill rigs that will be turning between Pahili and Santiago over the next uh, 18 months with the goal of making a, a significant uh, new discovery. And we're evaluating multiple uh, districts where we can start with a concession or two within the exciting district to build another significant project in our, in our portfolio uh, in Ecuador. And I'll, I'll leave it there and turn it over to Sam uh, to see if we've got any questions. Sounds good. Um, thanks. And just, to, just to notice that anyone has any questions, please use the platform to your right and use it uh, privately. Uh, first question we have is, uh, can you guys talk a bit more about ESG efforts at El Domo and Curie Palm? Uh, sure. So it was our choice to enter Ecuador in uh, late 2017. Uh, we entered Ecuador with uh, our partner Salazar Resource versus a very successful Ecuadorian group. And they set the stage uh, for us in all three projects uh, as all three came out of the sales organization from a ESG perspective. Um, so we have a significant, significant commitment to all of our communities uh, to support them from a long-term perspective with various programs, which we continue to adapt uh, as we get closer, for example, to a construction decision at uh, El Domo. We've also given back significantly during COVID a uh, $200,000 uh, budget to support our communities with food stuffs, water, uh, PPE, uh, et cetera. Uh, we've also brought a international experience to the table in terms of advancing uh, our uh, e EIA and feasibility study to the world standards. Um, and that's bringing a new context to uh, development in, in, in Ecuador. I think I'll add to that, and I think a big part of our end of the bargain as Adventus is to bring in um, international guidelines from IMF, uh, kind of World Bank, Equator Principles, kind of those standards um, in development, and, and kind of really transitioning from a transactional approach that's that's kind of prevalent in, in a lot of developing countries to more of a, let, let's see how we can do this and, and show that, you know, transparently show that we're long-term members of the community. So, so that goes for El Domo, Kiripamba, as well as our other two projects. Um, and, and it's kind of a concerted effort by us, working with the Salazars, as well as our subsidiaries and local stakeholders, whether it's you know, rural project communities, uh, different levels of government in Ecuador, um, but always with the context of what is international best practice. So for us at, at Aventus, uh, Olivia Gamache leads, leads the charge there. Um, bringing her experience from essentially extensive experience from Hatch as well as uh, recently in Yamana. Um, and there's a more detailed information on our website. Um, in terms of consultants, um, I think uh, Night Peace Hold has been a big lead with us for on the EIA related work. So that work is uh, largely on track and despite COVID, uh, we'll be submitting that draft EIA uh, early next year. Um, then the other part, uh, I think there are a lot of questions around tailings as well and design. And that work is being led by Clone Crip and Burger. So it's uh, definitely part of our focus uh, with, like I mentioned, Olivia Gamash as well. Dustin Small uh, is our project director at El Domo and Curry uh, Our two largest shareholders, Greenstone and Altius, have been uh, real proponents of uh, making sure Adventus thinks about ESG. I, I would argue that if we're going to be successful in an emerging country like Ecuador, it's critical that we uh, we we deal with ESG in a, in a proactive way. Uh, but for about a year now, we've uh, had an internal uh, review 
uh, ESG register um, on all of our activities. And our major investors are asking us to, uh, to, to formalize that register. Uh, we've given us a kind of internal ranking around an A minus, so, uh, all those things we can improve on. But we're definitely ESG aware and we're working on, on, uh, on those concepts and, and, make, and really are uh, believing in those concepts. Um, another question here is, what do you see as the biggest risk in Ecuador? Well, the biggest risk in Ecuador is, uh, is currently the presidential election. Uh, it, we are uh, cautiously optimistic, as I, I mentioned, but in Latin America, all, uh, all elections um, are interesting, I'm going to use the word. Uh, so we, uh, we're watching that closely. Um, and we've got uh, mitigation plans, however the election might uh, proceed. But uh, overall, the leader in the polls right now is a gentleman by the name of Lasso, who is uh, neutral right-ish from a policy perspective. And we expect him to be uh, a pro-mining. He currently has around 26% of, uh, of the votes and kind of early polls. Uh, but there's a long way to go uh, from there. And once the president is uh, elected, that's a four-year term. Uh, and with, within that four-year term that we plan to construct uh, El Domo and to be in production. So it, that, that is a critical outcome that we are uh, we we're waiting for. Yeah, I think I would, I would add to that. Um, you know, if you look at the climate within Ecuador, that is a risk, and everyone is looking forward to that in the first quarter of next year. Um, but the candidates, leading candidates, are, are relatively moderate. You know, there are no extremes. Um, and if you look at recent history in Ecuador, a lot of the progressive changes in the mining sector uh, as an investment jurisdiction were put in by. Kind of a left-leaning government so i think regardless of, of who wins the election uh, we see that the mining sector is here to stay in ecuador that that it will continue to grow um, that there is there is widespread support um, obviously like any jurisdiction there are projects in more problematic areas but that's definitely something that we've taken into consideration in working in the country and learning uh, for you know, three and a half years um, and i think for us um, how we keep tabs is very important um, and it's a big Kind of value driver for us was getting Nobis on board, and we're in touch with them uh, very consistently. Um, and they have, a, you know, they're they're very seasoned in, in navigating the political winds and the election cycles in, in Ecuador. Uh, next question. This is a more technical question, but we'll try our best to answer it. Um, it's talking about uh, associations in with El Domo and. And if there are any any kind of vectors or, or tracers in new exploration targets, do you want to talk about Aldomo versus other targets in Curry Pamba? Sure. So when we started at uh, Curry Pamba in 2017, we knew we had a mine in Aldomo, uh, but we were actually most excited about the regional exploration. This is a district that was uh, discovered by the Salazars 2007 to 2008 but through their uh, involvement in the project really started and stopped uh, based on uh, availability of, of funding. So we were uh, able to complete for the first time ever uh, airborne geophysical program last year. That was important to us because 95% of the district is covered with vegetation. Uh, we knew there was a lot of good surface uh, goal showings with geochemistry, but we just wanted to have another tool and toolbox to uh, to add to the geochemistry. Uh, so we flew that uh, last year, and out of that, 15 targets came out of it, which we've then compiled with uh, the geochemistry, land tenure, uh, trenching, uh, et cetera, and then ranked uh, the targets. Out of that, uh, about 10 are VMS targets. The majority of them are um, to the east of El Domo. Uh, never worked on uh, before, so uh, our field teams are getting out there for the for the first time, and about uh, four or five of them are porphyry targets. Uh, several of them with a good amount of uh, a surface work. You saw a lot of a care of the ground IP work, um, and so that's given us the confidence to to start there. In uh, in terms of markers for the VMS, we're looking at uh, jasperite uh, as a potential uh, marker. Um, but uh, 
for us at, at this point, uh, due to the vegetation, um, it probably makes sense to combine some of the uh, surface showings with the airborne geophysics and we can drill here very cheaply um, and the targets are quite shallow, uh, is to put some scout holes into these targets as we move forward over the next 18 months. Hopefully that answers that question. Um, next up here is, um, can you tell us a bit more on the financing and kind of questions from those institutional funds and how they see Ecuador? So congratulations on the financing this year. Yeah, uh, I think the institutions like the risk reward of uh, Aventis in terms of our backstop is uh, the El Domo project is the feasibility study, as mentioned, is very economic. We've got a path to development in 2022. Uh, but at the same time, we've got the upside through the districts that we've assembled with the Salazars and, and big potential discovery. So the, the, that risk reward is what attracted them to the story, as well as the about 50-50 copper uh, and gold exposure in, um, in Ecuador. Uh, so... Uh, in terms of uh, other aspects, I think they like the fact that uh, we, um, uh, we, this is like the last money in. We have uh, key milestones ahead of us that are transformational for the company. So they don't need to worry about where our cash is coming from uh, over the next, uh, next, next two years. Uh, and they hope to have a good return out of one of many potential outcomes uh, during that period of time. Uh, and then from a, a, a global perspective, uh, Ecuador is on everyone's radar screen. Uh, so we've got four or five funds out of Australia. We've got a fund out of Singapore, a fund or two out of uh, Hong Kong. It, it's definitely um, uh, moved up the risk register uh, um, and uh, is kind of fair game for, for all yeah. investors. I would, I would add that the sentiments or the questions have kind of changed uh, over the past year, I think about this time last year, uh, Christian and I did a trip, uh, kind of a, a bit of a marketing and corporate trip to Southeast Asia and to Australia. Um, and I think part of it is is seeing um, Virgin del Norte and Mirador, kind of the two first industrial mines being built and, and, and logistically cash flowing from, from Ecuador. And that's really been the big checkbox for for investors everywhere, uh, whether they're kind of Western institutions to trading houses in Asia, et cetera. Um, so the questions have more focused on the details and, and timelines. Obviously, COVID has been challenging for everybody. Um, but I think that appetite or, or what Christian said, the stat that Ecuador ranks third behind Canada and Australia in terms of new you know, exploration dollars or development dollars raised um, is a big sign of, of investor appetite and, and i think that will continue into 2021 especially after the election uh, gives some more uh, surety on, on the political situation um another question coming here um how do you see the situation in asway um i've seen good results despite the political situation so or apparently project uh, yeah asway is made up of multiple cantons uh, just just like uh, states in the U.S. have uh, multiple counties, uh, so uh, e each county or canton will have uh, different uh, issues. Um, Azawai is a, a province where you can work. Clearly, we're working at Pahili. We have very good community relationships there. Um, you could almost draw a line down the middle of the, the province and the western side uh, the Chaucha and uh, Ponce Enrique um, cantons are places where you can work in mining. In fact, some of the best social backdrop of any of the projects in, in Ecuador. Other parts of the uh, province, especially on the eastern side, uh, a little bit more difficult. Uh, but uh, uh, so far, so good from, from our experience. And in fact, we would look to, to grow our portfolio in Azawai if the right opportunities came up. Um, next question is, um, what are you doing currently from a metallurgical perspective, I guess, for El Domo? Yeah, as it's a VMS with uh, multiple metals, uh, it, 
it's important that uh, you do the proper variability test work and, and you build a geometrical model, which we're, we're doing all of that. Uh, we've also gone from a PEA to a feasibility study. We've done what, what I would call an internal PFS uh, along the way, which we've not shared to the market. Uh, but there's been a substantial amount of metallurgical work since that PEA that has improved uh, recoveries. And I think mo most importantly, uh, the concentrate quality and, uh, and con confirmation of the variability is not a big issue in this project. Uh, the, a lot of that uh, will come out in this feasibility study update uh, press release in, in about a month. Um, but we will have a very, very solid model for the feasibility study to, uh, to build a mine on. Okay. Um, another question coming in. Um, kind of the volume has come down a bit uh, since the financing or, or the, the new rise in the company. Uh, how do you see your liquidity um, going forward? Will it improve? Yeah, I, I partly addressed that at the beginning. Uh, in the financing, we had around 50 million of interest. Uh, we took 38 of that. Uh, we didn't expect the RCF selling. That was a, a real surprise for us. And as mentioned, that took another 13 to $14 million of, of interest uh, out of the stock. Uh, so how do we get out of this now in terms of liquidity? Well, we still have a very concentrated shareholder base. Um, positive is we're executing on the business and I'm very pleased where we are today. So it's going to be a combination of continued outreach. Um, we have several conferences planned. Uh, we have some, uh, in particular, retail outreach uh, coming in, in Europe. And it's just executing on, on the plan and uh, having steady news flow, in particular from an expiration perspective. So we've uh, roughly mapped out a, a news flow program, for example, in the next year, which, she's, which sees at least 25 press releases majority of them being uh, expiration and infill uh, expiration results. Okay, um, can you more broadly provide an update of COVID in Ecuador? Um, I guess we talked a bit about the project, but maybe more you know, it's helped to take more detail. Well, Ecuador is uh, lagging in terms of its uh, South American peers in terms of testing. That said, uh, a large part of the population have been exposed to COVID, and so there is some uh, immunity uh, inherent uh, with that. Uh, we had outbreaks uh, in around all three of our projects over the last six months that we have dealt with uh, in a reasonable way, and we've learned a lot uh, from that. And knock on wood, we've now been operating at uh, Curry Pombe here in Pahili uh, for the last uh, while without any uh, incidents. Uh, it's, uh, it's affected uh, our corporate offices in, uh, in, in Quito as well. Uh, we've got gone through that. So we expect to, to see cases come and go over the foreseeable future, uh, but we're much more knowledgeable, so are the officials, uh, on, on how to deal with it. it. It does affect us from a strategic perspective in, in that M&A-wise uh, strategic investor uh, Interest-wise, it's basically been closed, closed borders since since March. Um, we're hoping that uh, we can invite some potential strategic groups down in 2021, uh, if uh, if that's possible or not. We don't need it because we're we're fully financed. Uh, but it it's hurt the business uh, uh, from that perspective. But I'm uh, cautiously optimistic in being able to operate going forward in a, in a COVID environment. Just like in Canada, uh, we understand the Ecuadorian government has bought pre-bought pre uh, vaccine uh, for uh, for the Ecuadorian people. So uh, we'll we'll be uh, interested to see how that unfolds over the next uh, four to four to six months. Um, you speak about uh, potential acquisitions. What kind of acquisitions or jurisdictions would you consider? Well, we, we've uh, built what, what I've said is a uh, platform company for Ecuador. So we are focused solely on Ecuador. Uh, we think we've demonstrate, demonstrated our ability to uh, uh, do strong transactions in, in Pahili and Santiago um, with, uh, with partners in, in, in Ecuador. So we'd be looking for kind of similar types of risk reward 
earlier stage exploration projects with kind of big porphyry upside is, is really the main focus. So we be, we, we have internally uh, built a database of uh, uh, opportunities in country. We've identified up to seven new districts where we'd like to build uh, uh, a land base. Uh, this gra grassroots, more grassroots exploration. So it's not going to cost a lot, but I think it has significant strategic value. And it's focused on private transactions uh, rather than uh, cadastro transactions because the cadastro remains shut in Ecuador. So I think you know, we'll be successful in one or two of those districts, you know, building a, a, a platform over the next, uh, next block. A reminder, uh, please feel free to submit questions on, on this platform on, on your right hand side. Um, next question here is, uh, tell us a bit more about CanStar, because um, I guess we haven't talked about uh, or other non-Ecuador uh, investments in a while. Yeah, uh, this goes back to the genesis of Adventus when uh, we started as Adventus Incorporation and we had uh, largest land position in Ireland and owned several districts in, in Newfoundland. When we pivoted into Ecuador, they became non-core and we uh, vended our Newfoundland assets into publicly listed company called CanStar, which has uh, David Palmer as a, a well-known geologist involved with that, uh, that company. Uh, in the first few years, it was focused on polymetallic districts, but recently there's been a real gold rush in, in Newfoundland with the success of in particular newfound gold and we were fortunate enough during the summer to uh to get a deal done on on a uh, district scale package south south of newfound gold um in, in newfoundland so it's definitely resurrected the company we brought in uh, a new ceo rob Brueggemann, uh who's very well regarded in the markets to run it raised a few million dollars and uh, now they're often kind of a maiden program with some of the highest grade surface uh, goal showings in Newfoundland history. So uh, as a 25% shareholder, we're very supportive of what we're doing, uh, what they're doing. Sam sits on the board uh, of the company and we personally have invested uh, a decent amount of money uh, uh, in, in the company. So uh, we're watching uh, very closely and hoping for great success in their ensuing uh, exploration programs. Yeah, I think our, this is a reminder, our, our focus and Really, the defined focus of the financing this year is, is spending and development in Ecuador. So you know, I think we've put ourselves in a position where we've got great partners uh, in South 32 in Ireland um, and Canstar as well. It's, a, it's largely a, a passive investment we have and in support of um, co-invested there with Altius Minerals as well in, in Newfoundland. So um, yeah, no no concerns about uh, us kind of losing our attention. I think it would remain focused on our three projects in Ecuador and, and being active there more than anywhere else. Um, let's check any additional questions here. Um, I think that's it. I think any, any points that we've missed? Uh, Jane, any questions from your end that you received? People are quiet on election day for the U.S. Oh, there is just uh, one additional question that just came in from John. Oh, I've got a, I've got a one question here. Um, could you speak for Jason? Oh, here's a question. Could you speak for Jason Dunning? What has he communicated to you about Bahili drilling thus far? So I don't know. This is from someone, but uh, we had a Pahili update, a news release update uh, last Monday, so the 26th of October, so refer to that. Uh, and as mentioned earlier, expect more news to come because that only included results from the first three drill holes. Um, so, so definitely news is coming this quarter. Um, and if you want more background on the Pahili project and the work that Jason's been leading on our, on, on our old team's behalf, um, there are a couple of releases that date back into June, as well as an update in September as well. Those are all available on our website. Oh, by the way, this presentation will be available on our website later today. Okay. Any questions that you received there? No, uh, I do think that is all the questions that would have come through today. 
And uh, I think we're also coming close to our time uh, together. Uh, first of all, I want to thank you very much, Christian and Sam, for taking us through the presentation and the Q&A session. Uh, and of course, thank you everyone who submitted questions today. If you didn't get a chance to get your questions answered, or if you just thought of one now, please stick around after uh, we wrap. We do have a short yep. survey. You have the opportunity to leave your contact details for the Adventist mining team to reach out Jane, to you. Jane, one, one sneaky, one, uh, one snuck in question here. Absolutely. Um, you mentioned that one of the possibilities for the next period to 2022 uh, could relate to M&A. Can you talk about the appetite of large mining companies for copper gold in Ecuador? Good question. That, that, that's a very good question. I was waiting for that question, actually. Uh, so co copper gold, gold copper uh, seems like a thematic for both uh, base and precious metals uh, companies. Uh, both BHP and Newcrest are publicly talked about Ecuador as being a top three jurisdiction in the world uh, for them, for, for those metals. Uh, I would expect any of the companies operating in neighboring, let's say Colombia, Peru, Brazil, Guyana, uh, to be looking at Ecuador. It's just an, a natural progression. Uh, and, uh, and there are some notable uh, companies in those countries that are not operating in Ecuador. So I, I do foresee, um, some new players uh, entering the, the country that's been somewhat um, handcuffed based on the cadastro being closed for the last few years. So you got to do deals with uh, uh, companies that have existing concessions or with pr private concessions. Um, so we're, you know, we're, we're watching that very closely, making sure that they're aware of, uh, of, of who Adventus is. Uh, I'll, on a general basis, I'll, I'll tell you that I think in the three, three plus years now that we've been focused in Ecuador, we've never not had like TAs in the open with, uh, you know, with with corporates uh, interested on on the copper or gold side and or gold side. Um, and during COVID, that hasn't slowed. If anything, there's been more interest from a desktop review standpoint because people are limited in, in travel. So. Um, you know, we've done the financing and we're in a great position here to, to do a ton of work, uh, fully funded uh, into ne all of next year um, on, on the three projects. But those conversations will continue. It's part of you know, us being a junior mining company um, in terms of strategic partnerships or, or other things that we could do commercially. Um, so it, I think from our perspective, it's a, it's a big vote of a confidence in, in our thesis as a company. Um, there are major companies that are already that already have skin in in ecuador that have projects that have equity stakes that have royalties um but we can tell you that uh, there are there are many others who, who have not publicly made a move yet but uh, are, are very interested in making investments in ecuador all right okay. i think that's it jane all right yeah, thank that you was adequate <laughs> Thank you very much, Christian. Thank you, San. And again, everyone that's still in the room with us, uh, please stick around for a short survey. Tell us how you did. Uh, tell us how we did. And leave your contact details so that the Adventist Mining Team can reach out to you for any follow-ups. This presentation, like Sam said, will be available on the Adventist website. You can go to www.adventistmining.com. And as always, a recording of this webinar will be available on six.com. Thank you, everyone, and see you next time. Thank you. Thank you.